Well, welcome to the Luke Messia Show. Guys, literally when you come back next week, early voting will already be underway. And in some ways, it feels like the election is just around the corner. And in other ways, we have a lot of time left on the shot clock. We've got a bunch of different candidates doing different things. We're going to break some down, most important races that don't matter just for their specific races, but also for a broader conversation on what's happening in the GOP primaries. Also, I have the funniest video I've seen yet in the entire election cycle, Um, and y'all have to see this clip and watch the clip, listen to the clip, whether you're listening to the show or watching the show. It's going to be fantastic. Anyways, let's get to the show. I hope I'm coming through clearly. I am a little under the weather. Honestly, we have had something in our house for like a month. I swear my kids and I and my wife, we've been like coughing or sniffling or just really congested for, I don't know, like ever since the new year started. So um, there's something going around. It continues to go around. But anyways, we're going to get through the show regardless. Guys, there's a lot going on. There was a new approach that a number of incumbents have taken. So remember, of the 21 Republican incumbents who voted against school choice, 16 of them are running for re-election. And most of those are being targeted by Senator Ted Cruz, Governor Greg Abbott, uh, various conservative donors and organizations, various school choice specific organizations, and just the grassroots in general. Most of them are being targeted by Ken Paxton, Sid Miller. Across the board, the grassroots are all united in trying to take out these liberal Republicans. And as I've said in the past, the 16 that are running for re-election, most of them list amongst the most liberal Republicans. And and they're with people like Dustin Burroughs, as an example, who votes with the Democrats, honestly, more than some of the people that are bad on school choice. But that, just to kind of give you an example of how bad these guys are, that's where they're, list, they're listed on the rankings with people like Dustin Burroughs. Okay. So these 16 people have a problem. The argument they're making against school choice is not working. Okay. So if you watched the legislative session or if you listened to the debates that happened, you would have seen arguments made against school choice that said these are going to defund our public schools. You would have heard these are going to lead to teacher firings and layoffs across the state. You would have heard You know, this is going to take money out of the public education system. All these various arguments that they made. These are pillars of our rural communities and you don't understand. These are the arguments they made and they all voted against school choice as a result. Even though Donald Trump, the Republican Party of Texas, the National Republican Party, Senator Ted Cruz, Senator John Cornyn, who also has been a bit of a doofus this week, but even Senator John Cornyn supports school choice. Governor Greg Abbott, Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick, Chairman Matt Rinaldi. So they make their arguments. Hey, it's bad for our communities. It's going to shut down pillars of society. Rural Texas is going to suffer. There are no options out here, which has never really made sense to me because they'll say there are no options out here. You're like, then why are you scared to give parents a choice to where if they go to a different option, some money follows the child. Then they even set it up to where the money didn't come out of the public school system. So they literally set up a separate fund and funded it and said, All the money that's in the public ed system still stays in the monopolistic system, which I don't even think is a good idea, but that's the way they set it up to take away those arguments. So these guys vote against it. They go back to their districts and they tell them. Now, the funny thing is that last Republican primary school choice was on the ballot and over 85% of Republicans in almost every single district voted in favor of school choice where the money follows the child. So guess what? When Gary Van Dever and Glenn Rogers and Drew Darby and everybody else go back to their districts and start making the arguments, well, I'm against school choice because it's bad for our community. It's going to defund our public schools. Guess what? Those arguments didn't resonate. So the same things they said during the special sessions and the regular sessions, they then said back home and it didn't work. So they've decided to take a new approach. Let's go to this clip. 
We all know our border is in crisis. Drugs, cartels, traffickers. But it's also very much driven by the free handouts offered to illegal immigrants. That's why I stopped the recent school voucher scheme. It would have provided vouchers, $10,000 each, to illegal aliens with your tax dollars. Now Stormy Bradley is attacking me for it and says she would have supported that bill. That's just wrong. I'll never support giving your tax dollars to illegal immigrants. So this is pretty rich. This is their new approach. Hey guys, actually, since all my arguments against school choice aren't working, how about this? Uh, that's not why I oppose school choice. I actually opposed it because an illegal immigrant gets money through the public education system. Now, if y'all recall, the United States Supreme Court ruled that we have to educate illegal immigrants. Now, Actually, Senator Drew Springer, who's kind of gone off the bandwagon and, and seemingly kind of lost his proverbial marbles, um, has did file a bill last session to actually investigate the possibility of charging illegals um, for tuition to the public education system or some form of actually re getting some money from those here illegally who get access to the public education system. But here's the thing. Drew Darby, Gary Van Dever, Glenn Rogers, none of these guys made this argument. They didn't get up. There was a whole debate. None of them got up and said, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to give money to illegals, and we just can't do that right now. So they're shifting the argument. So I posted this clip on Twitter, and then our governor, Greg Abbott, retweeted my post. I don't know if you re-X a post. I'm just going to say retweeted. Retweeted the post, and here's what he said. Drew Darby is a liar. Every session he served in the Texas House, he voted to use your taxpayer dollars to provide free education for illegal immigrants at your local public schools. He repeatedly votes like a Democrat. Now he adds lying to his resume. He's out of touch. And the governor went on to also talk about Gary Van Dever's ad and other advertisements that were talking about this issue. And so you can see that these guys are on defense and they're having trouble defending their voting record, which is funny because like Rodney Anderson, who's a former state rep and a Dallas County, former Dallas County GOP chair was, was on Twitter just last night talking about how they're going after my friend Drew Darby and he just voted his district. Okay. Y'all are going to hear this term used before. A lot of incumbents will say, look, I just couldn't stand with the governor because I had to vote my district, right? And here's what liberal Republicans say. My district is evidently full of a bunch of liberal Republicans is the assumption you have to make. All these rural people, they just don't believe money should follow the child. Now, the problem is that's, that's why the Republican Party put it on the ballot was to take away that argument. You're not voting your district. You're voting for a very small group of select public school union members who believe the false arguments that unions, union bosses are making to them about the problems with these policies. That's your constituency. And you serve that constituency above the interest of your district. School choice pulls well with independents. School choice pulls well with Democrats. It pulls 90-10 with Republicans. So you're not voting your district. You're voting for a select group of politically active individuals who are teacher union members and who have told you, if you do this, we will fight hard. And they're going to fight hard. They're going to turn out every Democrat they can in every one of these districts. That's what's going to happen in March. Every Democrat they can turn out, they're going to turn out for Drew Darby and Gary Van Dever and Glenn Rogers and Reggie Smith and go down the list. All of them. Ernest Bales, Stan Lambert, every single one of these guys, Hugh Shine. So, another one of those members is John Kempel. And John Kempel represents the Seguin and Gonzalez areas, Guadalupe County and Gonzalez County. And he is a longtime member of the Texas House of Representatives. He replaced his father, who died in office. So John Kempel replaced Ed Kempel. Ed Kempel served in the Texas House, I don't know, for decades. And Ed was actually elected a Democrat, eventually switching to the Republican Party. 
and then serving a, as a Republican and a, a big loyalist to Joe Strauss. Um, and then when he passed away in office, John ran to replace him in the special election and replaced him, which doesn't surprise people. That kind of often happens. Family members with the same last name take all that name ID and kind of to other, honor their father or their husband or whatever run and are usually victorious. So John Kemple's also bad on school choice, but he's getting attacked by conservative Republicans for a very liberal voting record across the board. And at a local forum, he recently had this to say about Democrat chairs. Let's go to the clip. Chairs aren't a thing. They, they exist, but they do not disrupt the flow of conservative legislation. They do not. We have passed conservative agendas one after the other since I've served. And as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, with the largest property tax cut we just got in American history, we just passed, that takes 100 votes. There's only 86 of us in the Texas House. So to be able to do something like that, you need two-thirds majority. Democrat chairs in the a, a problem as we advance our conservative agenda. We just passed $6.6 billion in lower funding. We just uh, gave y'all an $18 billion property tax cut. It is not a problem. <laughs> Democrat chairs don't exist. They don't disrupt the flow of anything. I'm going to remind you of two things. One, they do disrupt the flow. Business and industry, transportation, Multiple Republican bills that are in the Republican platform filed, sent to the Transportation Committee, never even heard. You have the Criminal Jurisprudence Committee that literally handles law and order stuff. And Democrats use their chairmanship there to try to basically eliminate the death penalty for most mass shooters and other stuff like that. It was just crazy. Crazy. But here's the other thing that I have told y'all several times. Once you give Democrats leverage over all the other Republicans, they use that to disrupt the flow of everything, even things in Republican committees. Because see, they have to trade. So now some Republican member says, hey, I need my bill out of your committee that was filed for my local county at County Affairs. And the Democrats say, well, I'm open to that, but can you please hold up that other Republican bill in your committee and not give it a hearing this week? You know, I guess I'll, I'll hear it in two weeks. Yeah. And then don't vote it out for another week. Yeah, I guess. And then it'll get to the calendars committee too late and they'll stick it on the very end of the calendar on the very last day and it'll die. That's how it works. Here's the other thing. They continue to argue. I told you all about this line and it is going to be the line for all of them. Basically, they're going to argue we cannot pass any constitutional amendments ever if we don't give Democrats a lot of power. Now, that's crazy because the Senate passed every one of the constitutional amendments that they're talking about. Everything they say they did. Well, did you like your teacher pay raise like Justin Holland did last week? John Kempel here. I mean, look, we, we got to give you a property tax relief. I mean, that takes 100 votes. And I guess if we don't give Democrats all these chairmanships that they use to kill all a bunch of policy, they're not going to. Vote for property tax relief. Really? Then why did the property tax relief package pass in the Senate? I think maybe one or two people voted against it. Maybe none. This is silly. They think you're dumb. That's what they're betting on. All of you just being dumb and not being able to use a basic amount of rational thought to realize that these guys have no reason to give Democrats chairmanships other than they like doing it. It's basically the uh, the worldview they've been catechized into and they can't break from it. And here's the truth. Democrat chairs is not the gospel. It's a bad idea that man came up with that should be thrown out. Then Representative Matt Shaheen in Plano was being interviewed by a local TV station and was asked about Dade Phelan. So Matt Shaheen is good on school choice. He has the governor's support. He is being opposed still in the Republican primary. 
So let's see what he had to say when asked about his support of Dade Feeling. You know, I've knocked on, I don't know, probably over a thousand doors, talked to um, just large numbers of voters out there. Here, here's what the voters, the voters don't even know who Dade Feeling is. Uh, what my voters are concerned about is the border, mm -hmm. uh, the economy, and uh, education. Those are the things that are at top of mind. That's what I'm engaging them on, and uh, that's what we're, we're going to be focused on. Do you think that uh, Speaker of the House, Dave Phelan, does a good job? you feel like you'd be supporting him next session? Look at his record. We've ended abortion in Texas. We've been trying to do that for five decades. We've passed constitutional carry. I passed one of the strongest religious freedom bills in the nation. Mm -hmm. We're protecting children from being uh, sexualized. I mean, we even passed legislation that our schools are required to have our nation's motto, in God we trust. I, I like this because... It tells about Dade Feelin, and he starts out by saying, well, let me tell you what I talk about. Uh, anything but Dade Feelin, right? I talk about property taxes and immigration and all this stuff. Then he goes, okay, well, so do you think Dade Feelin's done a good job? And he says, look at his record. I'm going to go through all these things that Republicans uh, were able to accomplish. Now, remember our Milton Friedman quote, you can never elect enough good people that are willing to do the right thing. In politics, you have to create a political environment such that the wrong people want to do the right thing. And ultimately, what we know is that either through the force, forceful uh, positioning and leverage of the lieutenant governor, the massive amount of pressure put on the Texas House from the grassroots over the last, really, let's let's go back to like 2010, okay? So we're talking <clears throat> really the last 14 years that has been put on this house. Each session, we get a couple wins. So they always have some wins to point to. And that's because if we ask them to do 10 things, the Senate does eight of them, the house does three or four, and then they act like they're the most accomplished people on the face of the planet. So it goes through this list, but then Phil's going to push them a little bit. Phil praise in the, the interviewer here. All while he was speaker. So just want to make sure I'm hearing you correctly. That, that yes, you would support Speaker Phelan next session. I'll and, I'll and support Daffy Duck if they end abortion in the state of Texas. Okay, yes, so I yes. am. I am backing him absolutely. Okay, so I like this part too, because again, he doesn't want to say yes. I support Dade Phelan. So he then says, "Look, I would support Daffy Duck if he accomplished these." four out of the 10 priorities. Okay. Which again, I always say this, like the Texas house Republicans are incredibly good at having low expectations. Okay. They set very low expectations for their leaders and attitude reflects leadership and they have low expectations going in. And then when they get anything, they just think it's the best thing in the world. And they refuse to acknowledge, like he talks about, Oh, well we put in God, we trust in classrooms. Okay. You know what he doesn't say? Hey, last session, the Texas Senate passed a bill that would have put the Ten Commandments up in Texas classrooms, the Ten Commandments, and the Texas House killed the bill. That thing polls well with Republicans, Democrats, and Independents. Why? China land. Why'd you kill it? ESG reforms. You want to stop sexualizing kids? Then why? Why did... 11 Republicans vote to give taxpayer money to mental health care facilities that are sexually transitioning them with all these radical therapies. Okay. So low expectation set, but I love Matt Shaheen's answer. I would vote for Daffy Duck for speaker if he gave Democrats chairmanships and passed four out of the 10 priorities. Okay. Again, he's establishing the fact that he has low expectations, but why is he using the word Daffy Duck? Why is that the name he picked? His whole point is, I don't really support Dade. I support the idea of a speaker that can do these things, and so I'll do anything. It's not even Dade himself that he's supporting. He's like supporting the, I don't know, the just general concept of a speaker that could accomplish four out of 10 GOP priorities. So Shaheen, I guess that is considered a resounding endorsement, right? Opposite Terry Wilson, Representative Wilson a couple weeks ago said, well, I'm going to support the most conservative if it is Dade. Now, I mean, to be honest, if you're in Williamson County and you're wondering, Terry Wilson supports Dade Phelan, okay? But 
publicly he's trying to take this position like maybe I may I'm not going to commit. Matt Shaheen's like, "Ow, oh, I'm in." If he had a Daffy Duck face, I'd be in, on board. Okay, Matt. Tough guy. So, um you're seeing various members take various approaches to the Dade feeling question. And the reason they're all being asked this is because not only has Donald Trump endorsed David Covey, but last week, the Republican Party of Texas censured Speaker Dade Phelan. And they've only passed four or five censures in history of the Republican Party. A censure is like a permanent, it, it is a declaration that for this election cycle, we are not even considering you a Republican for now. And this is a big deal. So they are now being asked, uh, the Republican Party has separated with this guy. President Donald Trump has opposed him. Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick has been communicating to voters there, telling them how dishonest Dade Phelan is. Greg Abbott is refusing to back Dade Phelan and staying out of that race. So where do you stand, Representative Shaheen, with all of that? And he's like, oh, it, Daffy Duck. In closing, let's talk about what I think is the funniest clip posted so far in the election cycle. Uh, it could be that there is one out there that is funnier and you can send it to me. But to give you context, we're going to go to a ad being played by Glenn Rogers against Mike Alcott. Okay. Now, again. Remember, Drew Darby, Gary Van Deever, all these other guys, they've got TV ads basically doing this whole illegal immigrant thing. Like, I can't believe my opponent supports illegals. Well, Glenn Rogers is taking a slightly different approach in his advertising. Let's go to the clip. This is Mike Olcott, educated in Sweden, an Oregon academic. Olcott got rich easy after a family lawsuit. Out of touch, Olcott's got a mansion, a luxury boat, and an addiction to losing campaigns. He gave thousands against Greg Abbott, attacked Donald Trump, wasted $700,000 attacking conservative Glenn Rogers. Now Olcott's back with a $2 billion tax hike that defunds our public schools, privatizes public education, and gives taxpayer dollars to illegal immigrants. Reject Olcott once more. Okay, so... With that clip, you kind of understand Glenn Rogers, one, probably isn't doing too well. His polling probably doesn't look great. <clears throat> but he's basically taking this approach of, you know, Mike Alcott's this swanky Swedish cajillionaire. Um, uh, most of y'all listen to this on podcasts. You don't watch it. So if you're listening, let me just kind of at least describe a little bit of this ad. And I think this might be getting played on radio and TV for all I know. So it's kind of works both ways but the tv version of this ad has like a yacht big luxurious yacht some mcmansion in like beverly hills and sweden's like the alps and stuff so you're just like this guy in my mind i picture like a all boys boarding school that mike alcott was like shipped off to and he's educated and groomed in sweden i don't know it's just weird so mike alcott uh, had a response. And again, if you're listening to this, uh, you're still going to enjoy this clip because you can listen to it or watch it. But, um, I'll, I'll explain the video after we go to the clip. So let's go to the clip. Busted. My opponent, Glenn Rogers has actually been talking all about my yacht. So I've felt incumbent upon myself to actually introduce you to my yacht. It's been sitting here for about five years in the garage. But this is my trusted yacht. I've had a lot of good times on it. A lot of, you know, fun parties on my yacht. But just wanted you to know that, uh, yeah, it's here. Wanted you to see it. We can come around, maybe get a better view of it. Had some good times, like I said, on this yacht. One of the other things that was kind of interesting about that TV ad, he said I was educated in Sweden. In fact, I was actually, I got my BS in biology at Rhodes College in Memphis, Tennessee, and my doctorate in biochemistry at the University of Kentucky. That's where I got my education. I did spend some time in Sweden though. I did cancer research on an enzyme called ribonucleotide reductase at Stockholm University, which is where I met my lovely wife. And so, uh, yep, facts a little bit mixed up, but then almost everything in those mailers are a little, 
a little uh, mixed up. But anyway, once again, here's my yacht. So again, a lot of you listen to this. Uh, you can understand what he's talking about. What you didn't see was the fact that he is, he's next to a boat that's like, honestly, I spent time in high school on boats nicer than Mike Alcott's boat. It's not, it's not a bad boat. I don't even know the kind of boat it is. Okay. I had a friend that with a mastercraft, uh, when I was like late high school or right after high school too. So let's say like 16 to 19 and we would literally go out on Canyon Lake, just North of San Antonio all the time. I mowed lawns two days a week and we would mow lawns and finish up at four 30. And then a buddy of mine would, we'd both get in the car and drive to his house in Canyon Lake, get the boat usually on like by like five ten, And then we would just, you know, mess around until the sun went down. And, uh, we do that once or twice a week, had a blast. Uh, so anyways, that boat, like way nicer than this boat, also not a yacht. Um, but it, it's like covered in dust. This thing's been sitting in his garage for five. It's like the typical thing that people say with boats, right? It's just like, you have to maintain them. You have to, if you're going to use it a lot, it's really worthwhile. And if you don't use it a lot, it's not. Um, I asked Mike like about the boat. I mean, how, how long he said, Luke, I don't know that I've been on this boat in five years. Okay. And, um, but it shows how desperate these guys are that this is what they've stooped to. Okay. Like, Hey, we can't, again, we can't argue with these guys on the merits. We can't disagree with them. We just have to like basically try to deceive everyone about who they actually are. And that's what they're up against. If you live in a district that is a competitive house district, I would anticipate one to two mailers a day against whoever is the most conservative person in your district. One to two mailers a day, every day for the next three weeks. Why? Because Austin's only option is to basically spend, I don't know, $10 million in three weeks doing nothing but just leaving it all out there on the field. They know their power is vulnerable and they're not going to like let it go. So keep your eyes across the state. I'm really encouraged by so many of y'all who are actually doing active things. It's incredible to see all the volunteers showing up on the weekends and just getting all this feedback from people. People respond to my email blast uh, that I send out once a week with different tidbits of what they're learning and seeing around the trail and in Texas. And so always encouraged by all of these reports. I have had a chance to moderate a number of debates and forums and go talk to different groups even the last couple of months and have really enjoyed that. Just the opportunity to see so many of y'all. And have people come up to me all the time. Hey, I listen to the show. Hey, I watch the show. Hey, I send the show to people in my church or people in our Republican group. And so that's why we're putting it out there. That's why we're trying to engage with you on a regular basis so that you know what is actually going on in Texas. Why are these things relevant to you that I just went through today? We have this larger battle happening in the Republican Party. And the next three weeks is like a really big deal. And there are going to be some election results on election night that a conservative gets really excited about. And there's going to be some election results that we go, man, the, the bad incumbent who's deceptively campaigning is reelected. And that happens every election cycle. But a lot of these Republicans are having to answer tough questions. A lot of them are being held accountable because so many good men and women stepped up and were actually willing to put themselves out there because grassroots Texans across the state are engaging. And that matters. So, I hope this has been informative to you. I appreciate the privilege I have to come to you on a weekly basis. May God bless you and may God bless Texas. Do you want to get your news from people who share your values? Texas Scorecard, real news for real Texans. 